Welcome guys to the channel, it's time for our annual GoPro comparison. In this video, we're going to be comparing four GoPro devices in the form of the GoPro 8, the GoPro 9, the GoPro 10, and this one, well, it makes sense, right? You know what it is, it's the GoPro 11. We're going to be taking a look at everything from stabilization to video quality, from the audio and how these cameras take photos. Let the facts speak. The first thing that I personally set my attention to was the video quality of the GoPro Hero 8 which was released over three years ago. It's impressive to say the least just how consistent GoPro has been over the years. The footage you're watching now was shot in 30 frames per second across all devices with the resolutions being 4K for the 8, 5K for the 9 and 5.3K for the 10 and the 11. The main difference between them is that the 8 has the warmest white balance of them all. While this doesn't degrade the general quality of the video, I do prefer the more balanced complexion of the 10 and the 11. Another point that needs to be addressed is the improvement of dynamic range over the years. There's a slight difference between each generation as the 11 does the best job of bringing the subject into view as well as illuminating the background. Regardless, when you get the sun behind your back, each and every single one of them is able to provide good quality minus the inconsistency of white balance in which the 10 and the 11 are visibly better than the 8 and the 9. That being said, these are most obvious in circumstances where you have a lot in the frame. If you were to shoot something close up, then the differences between them are even less, which basically means you'll have to figure out how and for what purpose you'll be using your own action cam to better understand if you can save money by buying the Hero 8 or if you really need the newest Hero 11. While the video quality is arguably the most important part of an action cam, there are quite a few game changer features that can make or break your decision to buy a certain model. Oh and by the way, if you're having a good time so far, it would be really nice of you to help us out by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. We now return to your regularly scheduled broadcast. Stabilization is definitely a fan feature, so we'll start off with the most basic form. The difference is once again minimal, but the improvements are still there when you pay close enough attention to me while running. We then turn on the boost mode where the stabilization is increased and the footage is cropped in. I do like what I'm seeing across the board, but as a reminder, the 10 and the 11 are slightly smoother. The third lap is to show the new feature of the Hero 11, Auto Boost. Apparently, it's dynamic stabilization that turns on based on the camera's movement. Does it work consistently though? We're not really sure. The regular boost mode should take care of your everyday needs, but this feature is a nice addition because the frame is not cropped in. What do you guys think about the new feature? Leave a comment with your opinion and we'll make sure to reply to you. There's also the cool horizon leveling feature, or in the case of the Hero 11, Horizon Lock. It provides the camera with the ability to keep the horizon level when the camera rotates 360 degrees. As you can see on the screen, no matter how much I turn the camera upside down, it looks as if I'm holding it perfectly still. Horizon Lock comes out of the box for the 11, while you'll have to buy the Max Lens Mod to be able to use it with the 10 and the 9. For more information, make sure to check out GoPro's website, but do it later because right now, Time Warp is in the house. A sped up and stabilized video is just what we need to have some fun. We actually got varying speeds on these devices, even though we set them all to auto. The 8 is the fastest, the 9 is the slowest, and the 10 and 11 are in between them. We think that the 8 is too shaky, but that could also be because of it moving faster than the others. Everyone will have different opinions on this one, but they're all usable in one way or the other. The same goes for time lapse, which is basically a bunch of back to back photos taken at specific intervals stitched together to make a video. This is a useful feature because a regular video this long would take up huge amounts of space. GoPro has been historically good with this mode, so I'm not surprised that the 11 works even better as it can shoot time lapse footage in 5.3K while the others are limited to 4K. As for slow motion, which is another key feature of action cams, we've got some circus tricks for you. At 60 frames, the 8 and the 9 can shoot at 4K, while the 10 and 11 can go up to 5.3K. When we double the frames, the 8 and the 9 are still able to shoot at a respectable 2.7K resolution, while the 10 and the 11 continue to maintain a very high standard and have the option to keep shooting at 4K. Doubling the frames one more time is definitely an option, but in the end, it's up to you because the 8 and the 9 go down to 1080p, while the 10 and the 11 now reach that 2.7K resolution. If you're just going to be playing around with your footage, you might not need to dish out a lot of cash, but it's likely that professional editors will want that 2.7K option while shooting at 240 frames. 
wait, what happened? Oh wow, the Hero 10 actually ran out of battery after shooting all of this footage. But this doesn't make sense, how did it run out before the older models? I guess the only way to find out the answer to this question is to do a battery test. We charged them up fully, turned on the fan just to be sure that none of them would overheat and started to record a video. It was a huge surprise to us that the Hero 10 was once again the first one to die out in just 54 minutes. The Hero 8 followed suit in 56. The Hero 11 was the third to run out in 66 minutes, while the Hero 9 was the winner in 69. We think this could be because the Hero 10 was a version that got an upgraded chip, while the 1 on 9 was the latest optimized version of the old chip. They obviously improved the new chip's optimization with the 11, so these results do kinda make sense. Next up is photos. This is the main category that the older GoPro models really impressed us with because we had a really hard time pointing out the differences between the four. There are absolutely no major changes as even the Hero 8 is able to uphold the high standard. If I had to nitpick something, the detail in the shadows in extremely bright areas are managed a tiny bit better in the Hero 10 and 11, but that's all that we can personally see. As you know, audio is very important in action cams. Yeah, sure, you can use an external microphone, but it's always really nice if your um, action cam has a nice enough microphone that you can just take it with you wherever you go and then shoot the best footage wherever you want in however fashion you want and actually get a good result out of it and as you know we have the GoPro 8, the 9, the 10 and the 11 and there might be some differences between the microphones and that's what we're trying to find out. The Hero 10 and 11 are extremely similar when it comes to microphone quality and they are a little bit better than the 9. Same goes the other way around though, as the 9 is a little bit better than the 8. When push comes to shove, you can always buy an external microphone if you want that added clarity. So nearing the end of our comparison, we've saved a banger, low light footage. Interestingly, the 9 is the darkest of them all, while the 8 and the 10 are almost identical. The 11 is close to them, but is able to control the noise a bit better than the others in the first video. When we turn the lights down even more, the 9 is super dark which isn't a good sign, but even though I look a little pale on the 8, it actually outperforms the rest because the 10 and 11 have way more disturbing pixel noise blocks on the wall behind me. Now you're probably asking yourself, which camera should I buy, right? Well, if you're looking for an all-in-one package with every feature for professional or even semi-professional footage, then the Hero 11 is a good choice for you. It also has Hyperview, which lets you shoot in an even wider angle than the others. The 10 is very close in terms of quality and features, and can also shoot at the same resolution as the 11, which is 5.3K. It does lose out on Horizon Lock though, and you'll have to buy an extra lens if you want to activate it. The battery also might be an issue for hardcore users. The Hero 9 had the best battery out of them all, but there was a lot of screen lag, even more than the 8. We think this is the case because they installed a different screen on the 9 which is bigger, but it wasn't optimized as well as the previous model. The problem of the Hero 8 is that it doesn't have a front screen like the other three. You only see numbers showing you data like battery and storage, so if you really want a front screen, then you would need to look for an upgraded version. The video quality and resolution while being really good also isn't on the same level as a 10 or the 11. Well then, I believe that covers everything about GoPro and all of their newest devices and features. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to chip in and don't forget to like and subscribe if you're interested in tech reviews. See you guys in the next video.